So this is a game between uh, uh, Steinitz, I guess you know him, it's uh, the first world champion. Uh, it's uh, in the late 90s, uh, the late, uh, the end of the 19th century. This game was played in, uh, was played in Hastings in uh, 1895 and uh, Steinitz is playing against uh, a strong player of this period, Kurt von Bardeleben. So the game starts with e4, e5, knight f3. So, okay, it's 19th century. Everybody is playing e4, e5 almost. Bishop c4, the Italian game. Uh, bishop c5, c3. So, I guess the name is Giuco uh, Piano. I think it's Italian, it means uh, to play, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, to play relax or to play slowly. Uh, of course, the idea is that when you will play d4, uh, the pawn takes on d4 and the c pawn takes on d4, and uh, you will get two nil in the center. Uh, white is playing Steinitz. Steinitz is with white, and uh, Bader Leben is uh, is black. Uh, so, yeah. So when when you take on d4, the c3 pawn takes on d4, and you will get two pawns against uh, half a pawn if you go to d6. So you, you want to take center here. Uh, yeah, quiet game, exactly, Pibila, a quiet game. Knight f6, d4. Uh, okay, so knight f6 are taking the pawn on e4, d4, uh, taking the center, that was the idea behind. Uh, pawn takes, pawn takes. So. We have the lead 2 nil in the center, but the black will fight back, of course. Uh, they will not, not, not give up the center like that. Bishop b4 check. Knight c3. Okay, this is this is all theory. D5. Uh, okay, nowadays uh, it's a dubious move, but uh, we're not going to the theory right now. Uh, the game was played uh, over 100 years ago. So by this time, it was a playable move. Uh, so, okay, pawn takes, knight take. So you can see the white guys, white has a, an isolated pawn on d4, but uh, they have a dynamic advantage. Uh, their pieces are, are well placed in the game. So they will try to, to get advantage of, of this uh, dy dynamism. So castling, now the knight on d5 is under attack. Uh, I played bishop e6, I guess if you take c3, not sure I didn't watch it. Take, 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 I guess you have bishop b3. Uh, bishop takes f7, king takes x, f7 and uh, queen b3 check. Double attack, uh, sorry. Taking back the bishop. Uh, I guess that's the reason. Because if you go king f8, bishop a3. And uh, the same thing's happening. It should be something like that. So, black played bishop e6, protecting the knight. Bishop g5. So he's getting the last piece into the game and attack the queen at the same time. Uh, black played bishop e7. And now Steinitz is going to exchange all those minor pieces in the center. Uh, and you will see why, you will see why uh, after that. So he takes on d5, takes on d5, takes on d5. All of that is uh, more or less forced. Uh, takes on d5, takes on e7, takes on e7, and rook e1. And so after all, uh, what do we get here? Uh, we get an isolated pawn on d4, which might be a weakness, but the most important is that black can't take advantage of this because this king is not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Uh, if you castle, okay, you can castle because then you, you lose the knight. Okay, you castle. And uh, you lose this knight. It's easy to see. 
and uh, if you predict it that is, as it will happen in the game with queen d7 uh, white uh, is just going to play queen e2 and increase the pressure in fact the only way for black to get away of this situation is to play f6 king f7 and rook e8 but it's long it's one two three moves and uh, it's not really sure you will have time to do that hello noob beth noob noob, beth, noob fat sorry uh, was hard hard to say that one so black played f6 so starting the plan he wants to play king f7 rook e8 uh, here uh, black, white played queen e2 uh, a game was played uh, in the 70s, I guess. It was by uh, Geller. Queen a4, king f7, knight e5. It was pretty forced. It's uh, playing this way, queen c4. Just, just going through those moves quickly. It's just to show you another way to play it. More direct. And uh, the game was, was won like that. Hello, chess nooks. Yes, it's uh, chess base eleven. Chess base eleven. So, okay, just wanted to show to show this concrete line. Uh, but Steinitz, I played queen a two, and frankly, I prefer this way of playing because uh, he's not winning with some tactics, sacrificing pieces. He's just increasing pressure and winning it almost without tactics. Yeah, the nice sacrifice was, was was beautiful. That was I show the game, but but I prefer the Steinitz way. It's it's more classical. Queen d7, so pretty the only move. It's pretty only move. Rook c1, so putting his pieces on the open or semi-open file. It's it's logical. C6. So as I wrote, if Bardeleban. I can manage to play queen f, uh, king f7, rook e8, and rook a d8. Uh, they will, uh, black will be able to attack the d4 pawn, and uh, and then even get the advantage maybe. If if white can't react, then black is just going to, to bring his pieces in the center and attack this d4 pawn. So white need to make something uh, in order to win that game. So he's playing, ah, forgot it's the moment. So he's playing, yeah, d5. I just showed that, yeah. This marvelous move, it's two, uh, two exclamation points, d5. So now he's freeing the d4 square for the knight. Uh, and the knight will go to e6 and will connect with the rook from the c7 uh, square. And in fact, in fact, it's a positional pawn sacrifice giving up the pawn and then gain, getting all the pieces into play and this is really a move you, 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 you need to remember because it's something that you can really use pretty often I guess when you see me blitzing sometimes I, I, I also do such sacrifices uh, it, it's really a classic it's something you should really remember sacrificing the pawn then it takes back the pawn and knight d4 and now it's really dominant. This pawn on d5, in fact, is it's it's even uh, annoying for black. It's it's just like helping the white pieces to, to get into play. Uh, if he would have played king f7, uh, white would just have win with pawn takes, pawn takes, and rook d1, and uh, everything is fallen. If, by example, queen e6, I guess queen queen e6. I guess at least queen uh, e6, king e6, knight d4, and uh, knight takes e6. At least, maybe you could get something better, but that's minimum. So knight d4, king f7. Now knight e6. The knight is connecting with the rook. So the threat is rook c7. Rook hc8. Uh, pretty logical. 
case, just trying to, to protect the c7 square. Queen g4, he attacks g7, and the queen on d7 at the same time. Uh, so g6, okay, protecting the pawn. Uh, so now, what do we play? What do we play here? It smells tactics here, but uh, how do you finish it? I'm waiting a bit because we have uh, we have the delay, so I give you time. I give you some time. Win the queen. Uh, can you be more concrete, Osuriel? Uh, okay, we'll write on the chat. Okay. Knight g5. Check. As chess noobs wrote. Okay. It's preparing for the final blow. So now king e8 is the only move. And now what do we do? Now what do we do? Because black protected the queen and uh, now we have a queen on prize, on prize as I say in French and the knight on prize also. Yeah, it's not finishing it. It's the move, but it's not the end. What do we do now? What do we do now? We need to find something. I give you time. It's beautiful, beautiful tactic. Because I would think of uh, knight h7, queen g4, knight f6, king f7. It's not working. Ah, oh, I was I was speaking about that and then I read it. Knight h7, queen g4. Okay, just just trying it. Then we go to to rookie e7. Uh, okay. It's it's not really winning. It's just a pawn up. And maybe he, we could do something better after. Well, maybe we don't have anything better. But look at that. Rook takes e7. It's a terrific move. It's a terrific move. Uh, you cannot take the rook back. If you play, okay, if you play rook queen e7, okay, the easy rook c8, hello 7, rook c8 and uh, queen c8. Okay, it's winning. Uh, it's easy. And if king e7, rook e1, king d6, queen d4, uh, wait, I, I, I don't try the, 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 the end of the variation. So let me just, uh, okay, by example, rook c5, rook, c, rook e6, queen e6, knight e6, king e6, queen c5, as, exam as an example, uh, if you go, okay, what do you say, it's queen c7, okay, king c7, then knight e6 check, king b8, queen f4, Rook c4, knight, uh, rook c7, knight c7, queen c7, rook e8, checkmate. So it's uh, it's impossible to take with the king neither. So the only move seems to be queen, uh, king f8. But after king f8. Rook f7 check, so you still can take on f7 
because if you take on f7, I won't take back because rook c1 checkmate. Uh, but uh, but uh, we just take on c8 uh, as on the previous variation. Take take, and okay, it's uh, it's just piece up. So he has to play king g8. But now white go rook g7. So the rook just owns the seven rank. If you take with the queen, okay, the rook is falling on c on c8, and if you take with the king then queen take d7 check and you have no time and you have no time to take back on c1 because it's check so king h8 is the move but now he plays rook take h7 check and here uh, black just resigned because uh, after King G8, Rook G7, uh, Rook G7, King H8, Queen H4, King G7, Queen H7, King F8, Queen H8, King E7, Queen comes here, King E8, Queen G8, King A7, Queen f7, rook d8, queen f8, rook e, uh, queen e8, uh, oh, is it winning? Ah, knight f7, king d7, and queen d6, checkmate.